界は恋に落ちている光の矢胸を刺す。Welcome everybody to the top 10 best fall anime of 2017. You know the drill by now. My name is Misty Slash Gunnings, yeah? The first. And this is the video you need to watch to find out where to direct your attention for the season. As usual, as per every season, I'm covering the top 10 in two f o r m a t Section 1, we hit the brand new IP, intellectual property. Section 2 is a lightning round about the best sequels you need to watch. I usually go through those faster as they don't really need an introduction. Now, keep in mind while I make this list to be relevant of the current season, none of these shows have finished airing yet. Meaning they could have a weak start but finish super strong and vice versa. And that would, of course, affect the overall ranking. But with only a handful of episodes out at the moment, I have to judge them with what's currently available. But finally, we can't talk about the best without considering what's the worst. So let's talk about some of the most disappointing anime this season. Let's call them Razzie's Awards. That's never been used before. Let's go! And the worst series of the season belongs to Evil or Live. You know, every season there's one anime that just pains my soul. This fall, the award belongs to Evil or Live. I struggle to even count this as an anime. Within the first episode, it takes about three minutes before you see the very first animation. Anything else is either a still image or stock footage that just got filmed. The characters are impossible to like. Antagonist comes off as mindless zombies with no soul. Everyone is bland. The art and the animation are sore to the eyes. The audio isn't pleasing. The story is poorly taught out about people having internet addiction, so they're put in Hitler camps. With condition worse than jails, so it's, it's stupid, don't, don't waste your time on it. But not far behind, we have contestant number two! And the second worst anime of the season belongs to King's Game! <laughs> oh, this one pains me so much to put it here. I really, really wanted to love it. The premise got my dick super hard, so let me tell you about it. So there's this random class that receive a text at the same time. On it is an order from an unknown king. They must obey the order or they die. There's some supernatural shenanigans, that's fine, whatever. New transfer student gets here, he doesn't want to befriend anyone because he was in a past king game, so he's super shook when he realizes he just entered a new game. Now, why does it suck? Because the characters, they're, they're so dumb. They see some voodoo magic but think it's fake or a coincidence. They forget someone who died in front of them three minutes ago and they switch persona every 15 seconds. It's nonsensical and pains me because I really wanted to love this show. God damn it! And the worst, number three, we have Black Clover. Now I'm putting Black Clover here, but it's kind of a flex pick. I know some people really like it and it doesn't deserve to be here, and I somewhat agree with them. However, I did end up putting it here because to me it is the most disappointing anime this season. Everyone and their mother had nothing but praises to say about the Black Clover manga, where it would become the new Naruto or One Piece, and well, when the first episode aired, pwom, pwom, nothing but deception. Personally, I still believe it can be salvaged and become really good, but with what's currently out, it's gonna be a tough climb. So it's in the worst despite me being skeptical about this ranking. Hopefully, I'm wrong. Hopefully. <laughs> And now we get in the main list, starting with number 10, Garo Vanishing Line. Garo is a turn your brain off and enjoy mindless violence for a while kind of anime. If I had to compare it to some existing anime, I'd say it's an exact mix between Shingeki no Bahamut and Dimension W. Big monster, vehicles, explosion, blood, people dying. The anime is done by Mappa Studio, so all I could see was the resemblance between the characters in Shingeki no Bahamut and this one. Put a plotline of big strong guy who has to protect a little girl because she's valuable in the eyes of the bad guys, and you have Garo. The action scenes and the overall execution are nice, but I had trouble getting into it. Maybe it just wasn't for me. Hopefully, it works for you, though. Mm. 
お姉ちゃん風邪ひいた明日は終業式なのにねごめんももか Number nine, just because. Why number nine? Yeah, just because. Jokes aside, I can see this anime having a lot of potential, but I should also warn you it's super slow paced. Like, barely anything happened in episode one. If that's detrimental to your enjoyment, skip it. There's no way you'll have fun with this anime. But otherwise, I think it's a great microcosm of a school. The story begins in a setting where students are on their final year and they have to decide whether to go to college, get a job. It's a very personal and internal topic that's relatable to anyone just graduating. Add in the mix, a transfer student, and you get to see tiny specks of everyone's life. The girl who doesn't want the photography club to be shut down, the baseball player who wants to hit a home run, the trumpet girl, etc. It's sweet and endearing, it's a soul soothing anime. Number 8. Blend S. Ah,、uh, here we have the obligatory Moe Blob Cafe slash Work slash Made theme of the season. Every three months or so, we have a new one. Restaurant in the New World from last summer. Before that was Sakura Quest, and before that we had May Dragon. Now it's time for Blend S. This is a cute show about a girl who wants to get money to travel and study abroad, but she can't get a job because she has mean eyes. She finally gets a spot in a cafe, but she has to play the role of a sadistic maid. Every other girl p l a y a different gender academy girl, so you got the tsundere girl, the little sister, etc. You get the idea. Despite being nice, she has to be mean to customers, and it makes for some pretty funny setups. I admit I laugh at quite a few jokes. But it's another mindless slice of life comedy with no goals or progression. Watch it if you like just cute atmosphere and bubbly jokes. Number 7. Kino no Tabi. Kino no Tabi is not exactly a new anime, nor is it a sequel. It's actually a reboot. And if you've never saw the original one, I'd highly suggest you invest yourself in this brand new one. The story revolves around Kino, a teenager wandering the land who appreciates the finest things in the world that it has to offer. Along with Hermes, a talking motorcycle, they both go on adventures together. There's no real rhyme or reason to this show, it's an anime much like just because you go in to soak in the atmosphere. If you enjoy anime like Mushishi, Aria the Animation, or Natsume Yujincho, this is the kind of soothing anime you'll get with Kino no Tabi. Number 6 Shoujo Shumatsu Ryoku. Shoujo Shumatsu Ryoku is a pretty calming anime. Similar to Kino no Tabi, the story is about two girls after civilization has been reduced to ashes. They're the only survivors left. The show does a great job at captivating the wildness of the world and its mysteries when there's no one else around. It's a very peaceful anime where its shiniest aspect is the relationship between the two girls. It's very real, and as opposed to characters' archetype, you can tell that they have a really deep connection. I kind of have my own theory as to where this is going, but I'll keep it to myself in case I'm right and I ruins your perspective of the show. Overall, try it if you enjoy cool ambience. Number 5. Children of the Whales. Here's a tiny gem in the rough. Everyone is talking about the big guns that got released this season, and this one has kind of been buried in the sand. The story begins on a tiny island where people have special psychokinetic powers. However, there is a drawback to the skills, it cuts their lifespan tremendously, making it so people never really live much further past their 30s. The island constantly drifts on a sea of sand, and once in a while they pass by another island. One day, one show up and they investigate it. For the first time ever, they meet a lone girl on the island and are now led to believe there are more to the world than their single island. It's a pretty interesting topic with a very unique art style that sneaks in CG super subtly. People don't even notice this anime is in 3D. Did you see it?
Number 4. Neju no Susume You know with all the video game hype anime received with the last few years, it makes it kinda hard to take any new IP seriously in the genre. So when they told me a Log Horizon meet Watamode, I went in with maximum skepticism, thinking it would blow, but surprisingly they make it work. The story is about a girl neat, she lost her job and now devote her entire time onto a brand new MMORPG she found. On there, she creates a male character and meet with Lily, a young girl character who she quickly befriends. The outcome is pretty predictable, but the ride is still quite enjoyable. Funny jokes, likable character and an interesting premise mixing fantasy world and the real one. I recommend this one quite a lot. Number 3, Juni Tyson. Probably my favorite this season. The first episode was such a clever bamboozle, I loved every second of it. Plus, it's a survival anime, which I freaking love! The anime is the reason I can handle King's Game being subpar, I have this one to divert back to. The story pits 12 fighters, all representing symbols of Chinese zodiac. You follow the main character, the boar, as you learn about her life to become one of the best fighters in the world how she becomes such a dependable, clever, and undefeated champion. There's a bit of supernatural vibe going on with stuff like any wish being granted or the host vanishing, but I'm okay with a supernatural Hunger Game anime. One of my favorite shows this season, I just hope it won't end up disappointing me down the road, but with such a clever premise, I couldn't help but love it. <laughs> Number 2, Hinuyashiki. What a roller coaster of emotion this one sent me on. Only within the first episode, too. The story begins with Inuyashiki, an old man in his late 50 who does his best for his family, but everyone takes him for granted. They're ashamed of him and consider him pathetic on his best day. After he goes to a doctor appointment, he learns he has cancer. When he tries to tell his family, he realizes no one cares. Around at the same time, he starts bonding with a stray dog, and it's very tragic, and suddenly the show does a complete 180 and goes in a complete new direction. Not gonna spoil it, but it's quite a shock. They do manage to bring it back and hold it together, and overall I like it quite a lot. It's in 3D, by the way, if you couldn't tell. I, I know it bothers some people, but I really like it myself, so I have to recommend it. And finally, number one, Mahotsukai no Yomi. Alright, I gotta admit I messed up pretty badly. In last season's video, Summer 2017, I said Magus Bride was the anime to watch for summer. <laughs> uh, turns out it was pushed back to fall 2017, so now I'm, I'm talking about it again. But I wasn't wrong, it is actually incredible. The story begins with a family less girl who's been put to auction. A tall creature named Elias buys her off for a huge amount of money and brings her to a cottage. There he reveals that he is a powerful magus and he means for her to become his apprentice. Oh, and he also wants to bone her. <laughs> Literally. See, you don't get clever puns like that on other top 10's list. Anyway, this show is lovable in every way. I haven't found one person who genuinely dislikes it. Best of the season, hands down, and I recommend it to everyone. That is, if you can bear to wait the weekly releases. <laughs> And now, time for the lightning round of sequels. Grab onto something because it's gonna go by hella fast. Number 10, Yuki Yuna's a hero. What's the hardest part when eating a vegetable? The wheelchair. Can't be too soon for that joke, it's a prequel. Number 9, Himoto Humaru chan R. This anime did not need a season 2, but some people like it, so fuck me, I guess. Number 8, Yuki Holder. It's a sequel to Nigma, but you don't have to watch Nigma to understand it. It's about magic, whatever, check it out, it's alright. Number 7, Hozuki no Retsu. Remember when Goku dies in Dragon Ball Z? Well, it's that place, season 2. Number 6, Love Life Sunshine. Cute girls and catchy song. You'll never see the end of those, trust me. Number 5, Kekai Sensei and Beyond. Characters with all seeing eyes can foresee a season 2. There's some lost iron 
in there. Number four, Osumachi-san, six siblings times two sequels equal, it's still funny. Not like this joke. Number three, Sangatsu no Lion, just got even more dramatic, especially when you had girl's relationship. Can't quite play her ass in E3, but I bet she'd ate that D, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Chess humor, don't worry about it. Number two, Food Wars Season 3, Gordon Ramsay's wet dream just got even more wet. Wetter. This analogy was stupid to begin with. And finally, number one, Gintama, Japanese equivalent of The Simpsons, except it's still actually funny after 300 episodes. <laughs> And now it will be my honor to pass out. Seriously, you guys don't see how much work goes in these seasonal lists. Like, seriously, whoa, is me. I gotta watch like a hundred new shows to pick ten actually watchable. And even then, people are pissed because I can't put anime like My Girlfriend's a Show Bitch or a Sister's All You Need. But gosh darn it, if you gotta cut the line somewhere, you gotta do it right. Anyway, I'm, I'm done complaining. Not like anyone's forcing me to do those anyway. Thanks a bunch for sticking till the end, I hope you enjoy your fall season. I've been waiting for a new season of Food Wars since the second one was done, and so that's where most of my attention goes to, but I got good hopes for Inuyashiki, Magus Bride, and Juni Tyson. Anyway, that's it, now get the fuck off my property. No, don't, don't subscribe, just, just go. Get out. Turns a bit on the wrong side, I've been ashamed So many memories, you know I'd like to change